Hello and welcome to this presentation. Where we are looking at crop insurance and food security. And generally, achieving food security is mainly a global challenge, most of to developing countries whose economy largely depend on agriculture. Nevertheless, with the escalating impact of climate change, the situation is being compromised due to decline agricultural output. This has, however, necessitated the institution of a number of policy reform and initiative guide to effectively address these problems. Of late, a number of pilot programs have been promoted as a prospective tool to service production risks as well as this weather variability. However, there is limit, limited evidence on its uptake effect and overall performance. Therefore, this study adopted a dynamic household model of like food and farm decision to ascertain the general effect. A digital switching creation were adopted and mixed sampling method was used, whereby purposive and systematic sampling were used to draw a pool of target household from a sampling frame. Data was collected through survey and interviews. And on estimation technique, ladder maturity framework was the basis, whereby individual maximizes the utility subject to available constant, whereby a household will only ensure their crops if the utility level from insurance is higher than utility without insurance. As you can see, the participation equation is very high by insurance was treated as a dummy. That is whether you insured or not. And the outcome is whereby you are trying to find the expected household food insecurity index for insured and uninsured. And to understand the effect now, we had to look at two regimes, regime one and regime two, whether that is the observed and non-observed or the counterfactual case whereby as the counterfactual of the hypothetical case, we are trying to find the expected household food insecurity index for non insured if they had insured and for insured if they had not insured, so that we can able to find the average treatment for the treatment effect and the average treatment for the untreatment effect. Therefore, because the result from this table, you can see that in 2017, a 2% is insured. On 2018, 28% is 2019 was 29%. And for 2017 and 2018 was only 11%. This was due to non-compensation, whereby the farmers thought that the insurers did not meet the expectation. So looking at the determinant, we can see something like education, rather the maze, rather the maze, non-farm income, rather the maze tenure, access to agricultural credit, visa to motorable road, age, group membership, were all significant, significant in influencing adoption decision. And looking at, for example, education, you can see primary education was significant at 5%, no, sorry, at 10%. Education also was, test secondary was also significant at 10%, but tertiary was significant at 5%, meaning that advancement in education level improved the knowledge and understanding on the benefit and opportunity within insurance adoption. On effect on food security, that is the result for today. You can see that farmers who adopted crop insurance, if they had not insured or they had not adopted, the household food insecurity would have increased by 0.82. Similarly, those who did not insure, if they had insured, their food security index would have declined by 0.045, meaning that the overall crop insurance has an advantage all of reducing household food insecurity index, thus making <coughs> farmers more food secure. And on conclusion is that the number of household insuring their crop is marginally smaller and declining, basically to due to complexity of insurers or insufficient knowledge. Therefore, there is need for involvement of all relevant stakeholders in the design of derivative product through a feedback mechanism. Also, there is need for provision of a mechanism for continued awareness and training so that farmer can be able to understand better these insurers, how it works, what are the benefits, what are the opportunities. Yes, there's also need for development of relevant rules. This is to supplement the existing rules so that we can be able to promote the growth of insurance sector and provision of fundamental investment in infrastructure. Also, there's need for burdening crop insurance with related services such as credit loan and continued provision of agricultural extension services whereby Extension services will help farmers in understanding better methodologies of farming, input supply, 
a technology associated with farming. And lastly, there's need to minimize business risk. As you know, this is the main drawback for this type of insurance, whereby it is possible for a farmer to incur loss, and since the loss are not localized, then it means that the farmer will not be compensated. And this can be done or can be reduced by reducing the size of unit area of insurance so that we can be able to increase the homogeneity degrees within those farmers who that are within that defined area of insurance. So that's my presentation. Those are some of the references. So thank you very much for your time in listening to this presentation. Thank you.